Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, and a little bit of life thrown in. Uh, this is my kitty cat, Bagheera, who uh, was here meowing right before I was ready to start my video. So, say hi, Buggy. Say hi, Buggy. Uh, he's purring very loudly. I don't know if you guys can hear him. Um, today is <laughs> my floss tube number 176, and it is Sunday. It is January 22nd. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to say uh, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time finding my channel, then um, thank you for stopping by. I hope that you like what you see, want to hit like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, if you really like what you see and you think uh, the information I have is valuable and entertaining, um, there is a super thanks button down below for um, anyone who chooses to use it. Um, I want to say thank you so much to Jen, uh, the uh, backcountry stitcher, because she did use it last week, and um, I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Uh, it's obviously it's never an expected thing, but it is a nice surprise and. Um, it just helps my channel a little bit, helps with uh, the Zoom meetings um, that I do. Uh, I try to do at least once a month. Sometimes we do a little bit more. Um, and, uh, you know, and any shipping, that kind of thing. So um, if you are a, a, what is the word I'm looking for? Returning <laughs> subscriber. Thank you so much for coming back and sharing this time with me. Um, I enjoy so much doing these videos every week and um, doing a few extras every so often. Um, and thank you so much for watching and supporting me. Um, I did put up a little bit of an extra video uh, Friday, which is really kind of not my norm. Normally, um, when I do extras, I put them up on Wednesdays. Um, and really, the secret to that is because I get off work a little bit earlier on Wednesdays. So it just for some reason so that makes sense for me to put up an extra video I don't know um but uh this week actually I was sick on Wednesday um I got up in the morning and was uh sick to my stomach um and I thought I would tough it out and uh you know go to work anyway you know um and I went and I I pick up my co-worker every day so I went and I picked her up and we got to work and I sat there for oh, about half an hour, 45 minutes. And I was like, nope, I'm going home. And um, I just made it home before I was really, really ill. Um, don't know if it was food poisoning or just a touch of gastroenteritis. I don't know. Um, after I was sick, uh, that time I went to sleep for, well, I slept until 3.30 in the afternoon. And then when I woke up, I had a fever. So... There was just a touch of something. Um, I stayed home the next day as well on Thursday and I slept in just a little bit, but actually I felt much better that day. Um, I obviously did not put anything um, uh, difficult in my stomach. I spent the day eating dry cereal um, little bits at a time and sipping 7-Up, but by the evening I felt okay. So I'm feeling much, much better um, now. It made for maybe a weird week of stitching because I had extra time but didn't feel well at the same time. So, um, you'll see the results, I guess. <laughs> um, so yeah, so last week uh, was a little weird for me, but anyway, um, all that was to say that I forgot to post the video that I had made last weekend, um, on Wednesday because I wasn't feeling well. So I remembered on Friday when I was back at work and I was like, eh, you know what? I'll just post it today. I'm not gonna wait till next week. So I did. Um, it was just a little, uh, not very long video, just on kind of uh, prepping a county canvas project. You know how to you know stretch the stretch the canvas on the stretcher bars and and stuff like that. And so I hope that anybody who's interested finds that helpful. Um, let's see. I always do my Southern California weather report. Um, it has been. Uh, the last couple of days have been kind of clear and crisp. Um, our temperatures have been kind of low to mid 60s, you know, at the high, goes down into the low 40s um, during the night and early morning. Um, we had rain again at the beginning of last week and 
now it's nice and bright and sunny. Um, it's actually, the temperature's going to go up to about 70 towards the end of this week, and then we're going to get rain again. So it's going to, temperature's going to go back down by a good uh, 10 or more degrees, and we're going to get another like two or three days of rainy weather. So we're just having the ups and downs. Um, definitely this, this January, it's been raining, you know, actually it's been raining like couple days a week every week and then it gets all sunny and bright and the temperature goes up a little bit and then it pops down again so I've had that for about three weeks now <laughs> um let's see what else is on my oh a uh, reminder call our next zoom get together will be on um Saturday well you're being demanding sir I don't I don't keep petting he gets a little Pushy. Um, Saturday, uh, February 18th, I believe, and at 5.30 uh, Pacific Time. Um, all of the information and login info and stuff is in the description box below. And uh, I think that's about it. I don't have a lot of, like, exciting stuff to tell you. I played D&D &D over Zoom with Aaron and the kids yesterday, which was fun. Um... I'm going to be going to a play with Stacy and the two older kids on February 3rd, and then I will be going over there for the weekend, the following weekend, to spend some time with all of them, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, next weekend, actually next Sunday, when I'm on with you guys, will be the second anniversary of my mom's passing, and then a couple days later is the anniversary of my father's passing. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, you know, I, I am not anticipating it being a very upsetting day. I did, um, get my Yortzite candle, so I'll show that to you, um, next week and explain a little bit about that. Um, and it, it's a Jewish tradition. You light what's called Yortzite candle or memorial candle, and it's a 24 hour candle and you're supposed to light it like night before the anniversary and then you know you say a prayer and it just let it burns all day for 24 hours um I don't always do that to be honest um I I will be doing one um this year for both my mom and dad um even though I should do my dad's a couple days later um I'm not gonna have a candle burning when I'm not home so I'm just gonna do it on the weekend when I'm home when thank you I'm going to do it on the weekend when I'm here. But anyway, I'll show it to you. It's just a little, it's not a pretty candle. It's just a little, um, I got an oil, uh, I mean, a olive oil candle this year. And, um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a way of remembrance kind of thing. Um, okay. I think that that's it. I, I don't have a lot to talk about. <laughs> My apartment is so cold right now. Um, the thing about my apartment, I have these huge windows that are all right here and they face the afternoon sun. Um, and so in the summer and in the afternoon when it's the warmer months, it gets really hot because it just, you know, the sun just beats into those windows. Um, but I'm also, I'm a second floor apartment. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, this apartment gets super cold. Like it's colder inside than it is outside. I do have heater. I've never turned it on. I don't really like canned heat and I've never lived anywhere where it was cold enough, in my opinion, to, to put it on. Um, but I do end up having to wear like sweaters and socks and snuggling under blankets and stuff. Cause it's chilly in my apartment today. Um, that's why I'm wearing, I'm wearing my little hoodie jacket cause I, I, I'm just cold. Um, but, uh, yeah. All right. Let's move on. I don't have any finishes or new starts this week, uh, sadly. <laughs> um, I did work a little bit on my little golden book journal project for the year with all of my little golden book journal winners. Um, what I did actually this week is I started making, um, the, these are going to be inserts for the books actually. Um, and I have 
definitely sample one somewhere and I can't find it. Um, but it is basically, it's kind of like a self-contained little journal that you, and I showed it before, but, um, they're made using basically one piece of paper. Um, and so I just pulled a bunch of papers that I thought would make these, that would make these little mini journals cute. And, um, and I, and I pulled a bunch and I started folding. So I did like the basics. I haven't put in any signatures or done any decorating or anything like that. I just kind of did the basic of the, the original fold cut. And then there's a little strip of glue that is needed. And I did more than I'm going to need. So I figured, you know, I'll just have extras that I can use as giveaways later. But I picked some really pretty ones, I think. Um, I have a lot of people who, one, who said that purple was their favorite color. So there are quite a few, like, purple-toned ones. Um, this is a pretty, pretty one. It's got this blue outside and then the other side is a purple stripe. This one I love so much that it may stay with me. <laughs> um, and I again, I know I'm just showing you like papers basically, but um, I figured, you know, I'd just make an assortment and then kind of see which ones go with the vibe of the book or the vibe of the person that I'm making them for. Um, yeah, so I did that one evening. It's a pretty teal, and then I've got this other side. This one uh, just has this really pretty kind of um, medallion type of pattern. This one's fun. It's all delicate delicate flowers and then this really crazy sort of pink stripe which reminds me of like a, a ice cream parlor and this one's really pretty too it has a really pretty like metallic inside so that one and this one which is also kind of interesting because it's got this really pretty uh big bold daisies but then it's got really pretty purple sort of um inside oh and that one's really pretty too it's just kind of the subtle butterflies but then it's a gorgeous inside uh, uh pattern and then this one is kind of fun so anyway so that was a little project that i did one night um and I got going on those. So that's exciting to me. Oops, I'm having an avalanche. So as I said, with this Golden Book project, I think it's going to be kind of like steps. Um, and I'll probably end up sort of doing all kinds, all of the different parts or components of them together so the books will kind of grow together and then I'll be done at the same time I'm not 100% sure but um I will keep you guys kind of in the loop as I as I go on okay so let's get to whips um the first one to show you is my county canvas that I worked on during my zoom call last week um this is the country garden by from Nancy's Needles And in reality, this is the top. There we go. So I got a pretty good start on it, actually. Um, you can see just a teeny little bit. That's the color that I changed from the gray. And uh, so far, I'm enjoying it, and I'm thinking it's turning out really pretty. So... <clears throat> there is that. Okay. Now, most of the stuff I have to show you is how this 
stuff I've been working on all month, so it's not going to be like a big shocker. But the one thing I worked on that was kind of weird this week, um, I worked on on Wednesday when I wasn't feeling well. And to be honest, it's like after I slept all day and everything, I, I felt like stitching a little bit, but I just, my brain, you know, I couldn't think. So I, I thought about my projects. So I'm like, oh, well, I do have one thing where I can just do fill in so I can stitch, but not have to like you know, look at a pattern or do anything like that. So I worked on my classic poo um, that I'm doing in honor of my dad, which is just three colors. I mean, I still have more to do the outline of the poo bear. Um, and then it's the umbrella and then the poo bear color. But this project is just going to take, I don't know, 10 years. I have been working on this balloon. It feels like I work on it, I work on it, I work on it. It doesn't look like I've made any progress. I mean, I put several lengths of thread into the balloon. And, you know, of course, I did fill in a little bit here. And, you know, the unstitched area, of course, is smaller. But it just feels like it just goes on and on and on. But I do like working on this one. Um, just because of the meaning behind it <clears throat> for me. It reminds me of my dad. Um, he read me this story when I was a kid at this one memorable time. I remember, um, <clears throat> he read me the story of, uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, <laughs> which I got this book in, you know, when I bought all of the little golden books and I, the minute I saw it, I'm like, well, that one isn't going anywhere. That one is staying right with me and this project. Um, but there's a part where Winnie the Pooh falls and he falls into a prickle bush and the line in the book is that he gets up and he wipes prickles off his nose. Um, but when my dad read it to me, he misread it and he said that he wiped pickles off his nose. And I mean, I don't even remember how old I was at the time, probably like six or seven or something. And I just thought it was hysterically funny. Um, and so I just always remembered that. And you know, that's why I'm stitching that. It, it Brings up that really nice memory of, you know, sitting on my dad's lap in his big chair and he was reading to me and we were laughing and it's just a really nice memory for me. So, okay. So <clears throat> other than that, I stitched on kitty litter this week. This is a Dimensions Gold Collection kit. Oh, they're so sweet. Oh, sweet kitties. This is on the kit fabric, which is an 18 count Ada. It's super stiff. And it's like, it's crazy. I mean, it's an 18 count. It's a tight 18 count too. And then, you know, because it's dimensions, like, like the background they're calling, this is a four strands. And I know there's another background color it's five strands I have to change the needle size and everything because otherwise I would never be able to pull this stuff through but let me get this black thread out of the way that is for the back stitch that's coming but I don't want to cut it off yet so let's see I finished finished the stitches in both of his ears I think and just kind of moved on. I've got some more stuff done over here. Some more stuff over here going into this gray kitty. So it's it's fun. It's really fun to like put all these stitches in and then you know see one of the faces coming to life. And I mean, you guys, I'm sure have kind of caught on to this just by watching my floss tubes, but you know, people talk about they're a color completer or they're, you know, cross country or whatever. I, the way I stitch is I tend to be like a section completer. Like I, I, first of all, I don't like counting and having to go away from what's already been stitched. So once I start, it kind of just grows from where, um, where I've started, um, whichever direction. Um, but you know, and then I like to complete that area. Um, 
so I don't have like random empty spots, you know, it just kind of grows, if that makes any sense. Um, let's see. I worked on Mini Flower Kitty, which is a Heaven Earth Designs charted by Jeremiah Kentner. the wrinkly picture. And this started another diagonal. So this one I'm stitching on 28 count, a uh, two over one tenth stitch from the top down diagonal. And I love all the colors in this. It's so fun. And it's kind of fun as you go along and it's like, oh, I got a little flower. Oh, I'm on the stem, you know, <laughs> as it grows. It's been fun stitching all my full coverages this month. Um, I'm glad I, I did that as a theme. Um, I'm also going to enjoy moving on to other things um, next month um, and just having the full coverages kind of mixed in. Um, but so far, again, we're just in January, but I'm enjoying like the themes that I've picked and how they're flowing. So, um, okay. I worked on my orange mood black work piece, which obviously doesn't isn't in my theme, but you know, I still am wanting to stitch on it, so I do. <laughs> so this is a Riolis kit, um, and I was just so intrigued by the black work, sort of different, and then the colors. Um, I love the sort of bright colors on black. Um, <clears throat> black 14 count Ada, I don't have a problem stitching on. I don't think I would be able to stitch on anything that was um, like an even weaver, a much smaller count. Um, but the 14 count, 14 count block Ada, I so far have not had a problem with. I've done one other project on it and then this one and um, haven't had a problem. Okay, where, I think it was like this. So I did this little bubble. Um, started this is I think the bottom of the sort of coffee mug and um, this bubble so, colors are so pretty and it's kind of fun it's it's definitely works different stitching muscles than um, my regular cross stitch it's like it's like working on the counting canvas. It's kind of like a different, a di it makes your brain do something different <laughs> um, than what it's used to. Your brain and your fingers and, um, but it's fun to get into it and kind of figure out the pattern of each little section and the best way to stitch it to get the pattern and to get the, the stitches to look the best. So I'm enjoying that one. Um, I worked on Wet Sleeping Dragons live yesterday. I mean, I was playing D&D, &D, so it seemed like a good day to bring out the dragon pattern. So pretty, gorgeous colors. I'm still right in this little corner with only green. So on my giant piece of fabric. There we go. So this one I am stitching um, from the bottom, bottom right corner up. Is that right? Yeah, bottom right with me facing it. So um, 
and I haven't ever stitched one that way. Oh, and this is, I'm also doing uh, two over one tent on 28 count, even weave on, I dyed this fabric myself. So that was honestly the le least expensive way to go as far as fabric, because I needed such a big piece. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't really enjoy stitching on just plain white. Um, so, um, and this is a no background pattern. So I, I wanted something for the, you know, the sky behind them. I wanted it to be sort of like either a sort of a sunrise and setty sort of color. Um, and since there's so many like blues and purples, uh, blues and purples and greens in the pattern, I figured that it would look good to have some contrast. So I wanted something that had sort of orange, yellow tones and maybe just a tiny bit of pink. Um, so that's what I did. And it, it came out, the color came out really good, I think. Um, this is kind of a bright area and it's pretty much gonna be covered. But um, at the top where it will be showing is kind of nice and subtle and soft. So. It's amazing how many colors are in that little tiny section. It's about a thousand stitches, I think. It does not go super fast, but I'm enjoying the process of it. This one is going to take me quite a while because it is not a mini or a quick stitch. It's, you know, 650 by 450 approximately. Um, but I'm enjoying the process of it. Okay, and then last, yes, last but not least is my Catnap Faye. This, I, you know, I had a goal of trying to get this finished by the end of the month. I don't know if I'm going to hit that, to be honest, you guys. Because, um, what, we have a week left. And that's where I am. So, okay. So, we're at the top here. So, you know, basically we just, the wing goes to the edge. This is the edge on this side and then comes back in and up. Um, so there is a chunk out of the corner that isn't gonna be stitched, but that's still a lot of stitches to put in. Although a big chunk of it is just like the one color that the, um, the sparkly, like that. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, I think I might stitch on this today, see how far I can get on another diagonal. Um, I would love to get her finished before the end of the month. I would love to have something on my list of finished for 2023 because that section of my description box looks really empty. I was getting used to having, you know, 21 projects on there and every week, you know, because I had that push to finish the last two months of the year. Um, I was on the roll and I was getting a lot of stuff finished and I really enjoyed that. Um, and now it's all empty and there's no finishes. Um, so I would love to be able to get this on there, but you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm going to stitch on it probably two, two or three more times next week. Um, and we'll see if, uh, if it can get done. If it doesn't, then she'll probably take a little nap or continue to take her nap, um, until, um, March and I'm doing, uh, Fancy Folk in March and, she'll come out then. And definitely, well, I hate to say definitely because I said definitely I was going to get her done in January. But um, I think that uh, if she doesn't get finished in the next week um, and she comes out in March during my fancy folk theme, that she will get done. But it would be great if I could get her done. I Again, it's just going to depend on um, how fast how fast the, the stitching sessions go, how much I can, you know, get under, get under my belt here. Um, and how much confetti is in those sessions. But there are big chunks, especially the top, um, the top of the wing. So this section of the wing, 
that's a lot of just um, the one color or the, you know, the, the sparkly color, sparkly floss. So um, that could go fast. So it, it'll go fast because it's only one floss. It'll not be as fast because it's a sparkly floss. So I, A, have to use shorter lengths and B, just have to be a little bit more careful when I stitch it. Uh, and so we'll see, we'll see how far I can get. So you guys can compare here what, what is left. Oops. So you can see I'm right at this, right there. That peak is this little dark spot. So, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if I get it done. But yeah, I think I'm going to work on her today. Um, at least for a while. Okay, while I'm uploading and everything. And then... Maybe tonight I'll switch to a different one. Um, okay, so that is it for my stitching. Um, I do not have any haul this week. Um, and then plans. Um, I showed a couple different realist kits for starting. Next. So next month is uh, Floral Fantasy is my theme. Um, and I went through and I picked all my projects. I think I'll show them all to you next week. Um, I'll just tell you what they are today. But I did show you a couple of different Realist Kits uh, options to start next month. And um, a lot of people said that Wisteria is their favorite, which I have, to, I have to agree. I love this chart. It's so beautiful. But I'm also drawn to this one. And part of the reason I want to start this one first is... A, I think it will look really good with Sweet William. Um, be more of a companion to that. Not that I've done anything with Sweet William yet, but um, and then it's a bit smart, uh, smaller. So um, you know, it, it just it's less of a uh, uh, I don't know. It's just a smaller task than starting. Uh, the wisteria um and then a couple of people had some kind of cool things to say about it too as far as forget me nots kind of goes along with the be my own valentine um just as a way to kind of self-love um i don't know a, a lot of people in my comments said some really cool things about it so although i really love the wisteria and a lot of people were like the wisteria is my favorite but start this one because you're drawn to it um, and I agree. So I'm going to start this one, um, next month. So actually I think I might just get that into a project bag today. I have to pick something. It's blue. So I have to pick one of my new blue ones. Maybe the blue cat. Yeah. How about this blue cat? Put that together in there in preparation for next week. Um, and then I showed you guys my, um, My Be My Own Valentine project chart. Um, thank you so much, everybody who, um, which is going to be this. It's actually called Be Sampler by Little House Needleworks, which I forget every single time. I'm going to change the words instead of the to be or not to be. I'm going to have it say Be My Own Valentine. So I have to figure out how to chart that, but... Um, so I think I will say be my own and then Valentine down here. Um, but thank you so much for everybody who had sort of kind, encouraging things to say about like my story, about why I'm doing this. Um, and anybody who wants to join, please do. Um, again, when I host a sal, um, it's very informal. To me, the idea of doing a sal is just kind of like, uh, you know, it's not like a mystery style that is put out by a uh, cross-stitch designer or something like that, where they're, you know, sending you the charts or anything like that. My idea of a style is either to pick a chart 
if you want to be specific or to pick a theme like this, which is, you know, the Be My Own Valentine. And then, you know, and that's it. And I create a hashtag and then I post a couple pictures and anybody who wants to join can just kind of join mentally knowing that you're stitching along or, you know, or you can post pictures on Instagram as well and use the hashtag. Um, the thing that I like about it, because when I have done sales that are, um, like multiple year that that hashtag then you can see all of the different years you know on there and I, I like that um, so I do know a couple people uh, have said they're gonna join me um, Laura from stitching at the shore has already got her bee chart all picked out and she's talked about it she fact, she even gave away a bee chart on her channel to somebody to possibly stitch along a bee chart with uh, me um, and um so yeah so i know a couple other people are planning on doing that um so thank you so much anybody who wants to join with me it's great um i love feeling the community part of of the you know floss tube community when we do stuff like that so um so thank you um let's see so anyway the other projects sorry lost my train there the other projects that i'm going to be stitching uh next month for the Floral Fantasy, um, my Autumn Equinox Pixie. You guys saw that a lot at the end of last year. Um, I don't think I will get anywhere close to a finish on her. Um, I keep thinking like she's close and she's really not at all. Um, and then the Forget Me Nots and the, the Be My Own Valentine chart. Um, I'm gonna work on my little Snapdragon, um, which I am stitching along with, um, uh, Julie stitching at the cabin. We kind of started at the same time. Um, and it's kind of funny because I kind of started on the dragon. And so I have my dragon space and I kind of started going into the wing and a little bit into flowers. And she started on the flowers and she has like a really gorgeous stem of the flower done on her. So um, it's kind of interesting to see the same chart grow, you know, differently with two different stitchers. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we're kind of kind of stitching that we didn't salad or anything we just um I think I think that I showed the chart when I first got it and she really liked it and they went out and got it and so we kind of started at the same time we're also kind of doing this one uh at the same time so that's fun um let's see uh, oh my my lion discord new which has flowers in the corners and flowers in the mane of the dragon um that I have slated to get finished in February, um, I am stitching a Biscornu along with my friend Don Duval, who hasn't been feeling well lately. Don, I hope you're, I hope you're starting to feel better. She's had, she's had a, a tough couple months um, with the not feeling well stuff. But um, she and I had neither one of it, us had ever done a Biscornu, so we decided to do a Biscornu and um, did the hash, hashtag Biscornu beginner. Um, and I think. I think she might be further along on hers than I am because last time I saw a picture, she had finished the top and was working on the bottom, which I think she had to design herself because I don't think the one that she picked actually came with the bottom chart. I don't know. But anyway, so, um, so I'm, my cute line Biscorn you is scheduled for next month to be finished. So if all goes well next month, I will have two finishes because I will finish my Lion Biscorn You and I will finish the Be My Own Valentine project. I pick a little one so that I can get it done in a month. Um, let's see. Oh, Mouth of the Flower. Um, I'll be working on that one. Um, my Blue Bouquet with Cat, which is barely started. Um, and it's going to take forever to get to the cat because <laughs> I start at the top and it's all these flowers and at the bottom you see a baggy cat peeking through. Um, and then my mini flower kitty and, um, my green lace mandala, my chatelaine. So, um, that is my lineup for next month. Um, I will probably stitch on orange moon in there somewhere. I may stitch on one of the other, uh, full coverages that I have. Um, who knows, you know, I, I, my themes are kind of to give me guidelines, but it doesn't mean that I won't branch out at all. So that is, you know, what I have lined up for February. I'm excited about it. So some of those projects I haven't stitched on in a while, and it'll be fun 
to get into those flosses again. Um, so yeah, I think that that is it for today. As I said, I don't have a lot to talk about. I'm cold. I want to get back under my covers and stitch and snuggle with Baggy. Um, I watched, uh, uh, the Fellowship of the Ring yesterday. It's only on Prime Video for another 11 days. So, um, and I've been into, into the Lord of the Rings a little bit lately. I got, I've been wanting to listen to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, I started listening to books on tape, no books on DVD, when I'm driving to and from work. And um, I love the Lord of the Rings. I saw, my brother has always been a huge Tolkien fan. I think he read The Hobbit for the first time when he was like eight or nine. Um, didn't understand it, read it again when he was older, but it's one of those books that he has, he's always loved. And he always loved the Lord of the Rings. He got really into like some really and all of the Tolkien stuff. And I have to admit, I've never read any of it. I tried reading The Hobbit and I just couldn't get into it. And while I love the story, the reading of the books was something that just kind of eluded me. Um, and when the movies originally came out, I saw them with my brother. I loved them. We really, there was, there was going to be a big, um, when the third movie came out, a lot of, I don't know if any of you guys remember this, I'm probably dating myself. A lot of the movie theaters were having a marathon. Um, and so it was an all day thing and you would go in the morning and they would show all three movies back to back, you know, seeing the third one, people were going to dress up, uh, the studio was actually giving out gifts and it was a big thing. And my brother and I wanted to go so bad. We both took the time off of work. And then when we went to go get the tickets, um, the movie theater website crashed and people weren't getting the tickets and we ended up not getting them. Um, it was a big disappointment. So anyway, um, so I love the movies, but, um, I still had never really read the book. So I decided I would love to get the books on uh, audio to listen in the car. And I went to go like, you know, look at the cost of them. And, and when I get audiobooks, um, they have to be unabridged because the abridged ones just irritate me because I always feel like I'm missing out on stuff. Um, the unabridged, all three of them was quite expensive. Even like on eBay used, they were getting into the, you know, 70, 80, 90 range. And, you know, it's a lot. So, you know, I hemmed and hawed, whatever. But right before the holidays, I was looking online and I saw a full set, all three books, unabridged, in good condition for like, it was like $45 free shipping, something like that. So I jumped on it. I got them. Um, I started listening to uh, the first uh, book. And, you know, I'm going to be listening to those for like four months you know, four or five months because it's a, it's a lot uh, of discs. Um, there's, I think, 45 discs or something, something like that. Um, so anyway, I've been into it. And so yesterday I watched the first movie and I think maybe I will watch the second movie today. Um, snuggling with Baggy and stitching. Um, sounds like a good way to spend a Sunday to me. Anyway, <laughs> now that I just rambled on about Lord of the Rings for absolutely no reason. Um, makes me want to stitch on Let Sleeping Dragons Lie. Um, although none of the dragons in Lord of the Rings are sweet like that one. Um, anyway, um, that's all, that's all I have for you guys today. <laughs> I hope the last week of January is great for you. I hope you get a lot of fun stitching in if that's what you want to do. Um, I have this little bit of hair that is driving me crazy. <laughs> Ignore it. Um, anyway, until I see you guys again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.